So good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. I want to welcome you to our preview of our ultimate safari to Kenya coming up in July. This is going to be an awesome event. Um, it'll be the first time that we're doing the ultimate safari. And we'll talk about why it's the ultimate safari. And it's not the ultimate, but it's the ultimate photo safari. It's a safari that is 100% focused on the photography. We'll talk about what that means. And tomorrow night, we will talk about our Kenya safari um, that's two weeks after the ultimate safari, um, how this all goes together and how you guys can join us. And I want everyone to feel welcome to join, whether you're from Australia as Terry is, or Virginia or Huntington Beach or Philadelphia, or Colorado. So everyone is welcome to join us. You know, we have a large group that comes from around the world to do our Creative Photo Academy adventures, and you guys are all welcome to do that. If you have questions, please, um, during the presentation, feel free to open your microphone and say, you know, this is, you know, Bill, and I want to know about this so we know who you are and what's going on. Or if you want to type them into the chat, I will get those at the end of the presentation. Does anybody have any questions or comments before we get started? All right, here we go. Can you guys see the slideshow? Somebody tell me yes. Anybody? Can you see yes. it? Yep. yep. All right. Very good. Thanks, Chuck. So this is our presentation on the Ultimate Safari coming up in July. This is going to be a lot of fun for us. So I'm Mark Coleman from Paul's Photo and the Creative Photo Academy. I'm excited to be your photo guide on this trip. Um, I know a little bit about Africa. I know a little bit about the animals, but I will, I'm 100% there for you on this adventure to help you with your camera, your photography, your setups, everything. So this safari that we're doing is a, is a safari that's run by Macon Safaris. We'll talk about Macon Safaris a little bit later, and you'll be purchasing it through our friends at Simba Marara Expedition. My good friend, Maurice, he's handling the logistics on this end of the pond for us. And Macon will be handling us on in Africa and Kenya. And one of the things I love about an African safari is for all of us, it's a bucket list. And I'm lucky enough that this will be my 16th safari to Africa. So I've filled that bucket 16 times. And I'm very excited to be going with you and to take you to Kenya to see the animals and experience because... Without a person, without an, any reservation, everyone who I take to Africa says it's their best vacation ever. We have the most fun, it's the most exciting, it's the most relaxing, it's just fantastic. And on the ultimate safari, we will have the smallest group we've ever taken at eight photographers. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, we're gonna have a great time because we're gonna get to see the animals in a way you've never seen them before. And I want you to think about what animals do you want to see? And how do you want to see these animals? And one of the things that we're gonna experience on the ultimate safari is we're gonna get to see the animals up close. We're gonna get to spend time with the animals. And we won't, be able, we won't be afraid to spend an hour with the elephants or two hours with the lions or 45 minutes with the giraffes, depending on their behavior and what they're doing. So that's one of the things I'm most excited about, on, sorry, on the ultimate safari is to find the animals that we're interested in that offer an amazing photo opportunity and get close to tell their story, to learn from them. And if you're not a photographer on this trip, you're gonna love it because we're gonna learn and we're gonna see the behavior. You're gonna get to feel like you've been a year's worth of National Geographic Channel or a year's worth of Discovery Channel just on our week with the animals. 
and how much you're going to learn and what the experience is like. And it's not going to be a drive-by shooting like so many other safaris are where they barely slow down. You know, and we won't stop for some things, but we'll stay and learn and explore and really be there with the animals. We'll find them and we'll stay and we'll make the amazing pictures and see the amazing sights. That's what I'm most excited about with this group and how it's going to be. So what is tonight all about? Tonight's goal is, okay, this really isn't for me, or this sounds awesome, I have to sign up right now. And like I said, there is an incentive for you to sign up to take that couple spot who had to bow out. So who is this? So this is me on safari. And there is no better feeling for me than to be on safari in Africa, having an amazing time and an amazing experience to be with the animals in the land. And it's just so glorious. So you all know we have three safaris going this summer. So over the weekend, the gorilla safari sold out. So it's full. The ultimate safari, July 19th to 29th, we have four spots. There is one spot for a couple with the cancellation discount because they lost their deposit. We're trying to fill their spots so they get their deposit back so they don't lose it. And then Kenya's photo safari, we'll talk about tomorrow night, August 8th to the 18th. And there was again a cancellation this weekend. There's six, six spots left on the Kenya safari. There's an, a couple that had to bow out. So there's a $500 discount there to take their canceled spot. So does anybody have any questions about anything? This is what Can the I ultimate... See? Yeah, go ahead, Jean. Can I see a question? Um, you mentioned that it's a small group. Do you have a minimum number of people who have to sign up? I mean, you probably always fill up, but would you still go if you had that many openings? Oh, we're already there. Don't worry about that. We're all, we're already we're already going, Gene. Don't not to worry. So if you sign up, you're going. So arrive in Nairobi July 19th, depart July 29th. I have all the information for you on the air flights. Um, here's the pricing. That includes lodging and meals, safari and guides, park fees, internal air flights. Not included is your international air flight, so your flight to Nairobi, Kenya, your visas, which are about 100 bucks for Kenya, your insurance, your meals, your alcohol, soft drinks, laundry, and tip. So, you know, there's not a lot of money to be spent on the ground. The most expensive thing there is the tips for the drivers. We'll talk about that. And you get all of that information in the trip packet, which comes to you about 45 days before the trip. So I was hoping that Maurice would be joining us tonight. Sir so Maurice Oketch from Simba Marara Expeditions is my partner on our African safaris. He is handing, handling, he's taking your money, he's handling the arrangements, he's doing all that work for us here, interfacing with the people from, um, from making safaris in Nairobi. Um, we will fly, we'll talk about the flight, they will meet us on the other end and get take care of us from top to bottom. It is absolutely an amazing group. It's an amazing experience. And we're always just, I, I just can't wait to go. So, and I am your photo guide, photo instructor, photo helper to make those of you who are 100% comfortable with your camera, feel 100% creative and artistic. And those of you who are not so strong or a little bit weaker with your camera to give you the confidence to get the pictures that you want. And no matter who you are, you're welcome. Um, we will probably have some cell phoners on this trip, and that's great. We will have some point and shoot camera people, and we will have some big lens people on this trip. So it's going to be a little bit of everything. And we are going with my good friend and amazing photographer, Piper McKay's company, making safaris. And so she offers a little bit of a different experience than what we've generally done. And so she built for us at Creative Photo Academy an amazing experience. And we'll talk about that experience. Then different, that's different from the experience that Maurice and I generally build 
with Oscar as our guide. So we'll talk about that tonight. So does, if anybody has any questions, please don't be ashamed to ask. So for, lo for logistics and reservations, you're gonna talk to Maurice. His phone number is on the confirmation email you got today. His phone number and email will be on the recording e email that you get on Wednesday. So Maurice at smexpedition.com or his phone number there to make a reservation. If you want one of those cancellation spots, call him tonight, make your deposit, get it taken care of. If you have photo questions, call me. I'll be glad to take care of you answering your photo questions. If one of you ladies wants to talk to my wife about the trips, you're welcome to do that. My wife was very tentative about going to Africa for, for a lot of reasons and she loves it. She's coming on the Kenya safari this time as well. So just an amazing experience. I can't wait to share it with you. So how do you choose between the ultimate safari and the Kenya safari? We'll talk about the ultimate safari tonight, but the main reasons are number one, the schedule. Can you go in July or do you need to go in August? Let that be your choice or your interest level. How hardcore on the photography do you wanna be or how relaxed do you wanna be with your safari? That's all up to you. And we'll talk about that at every step of the way. It's a completely different experience. So what are your questions? We'll talk about the travel. The weather in Kenya in July is 55 degrees in the morning and 75 degrees in the afternoon. It's not hot. So I will talk about clothing in a little bit. You don't have to worry about the weather. Every now and then we'll have a hot day that's 80 or 85. And some days it'll be cool in the 60s. Um, it just depends on the weather. We'll talk about the lodging. You'll see pictures of the lodging. We'll talk about the food, the vehicles, the safety, and the animals tonight. So if I don't answer any of your questions, please let me know. I'm always here to help. So this safari, we're going to Kenya. Kenya is a, was a British colony, became independent in 1963, 41 million people. Their main language is Swahili. Everyone we encounter will speak English and their tribal tongue. Like most of Africa, everyone speaks three languages. So in East Africa, they generally speak English and Swahili, and everyone speaks their mother tongue or their tribal language or their family language. That's the language they speak at home with their families. So it's a very interesting situation to talk to these people whose skin is as dark as you've ever seen, and they speak English language with a British accent because they all went to British schools. They were taught by Brits. You know, that's the culture in Kenya. So one of the questions everyone asks is how do we get there? So you can't fly direct to Nairobi. You can fly, my favorite flight is because the way it connects, Los Angeles or most of the places in the United States fly to Amsterdam on KLM. I'm a Delta, I'm a Delta guy. So I fly KLM, that's the Delta partner to Amsterdam. You arrive in Amsterdam about six or seven in the morning, and our flight to Nairobi leaves around 11 or 12 in the morning, and that gets us to, to Nairobi about 10 o'clock at night. So for us in Los Angeles, we leave about one o'clock in the afternoon on Monday, say. We arrive Tuesday morning in Amsterdam at six or seven o'clock, 10 or 11 or 12 o'clock, we get on the plane in Amsterdam, takes us down to Nairobi and gets us into Nairobi at two o'clock, excuse me, at 10 o'clock in the evening on Tuesday. Then we go to bed and wake up in the morning on Wednesday and we're off on safari. It's awesome. Depending on who you fly, you can fly through London, you can fly through Paris, you can fly through New York, Istanbul, Doha, Dubai. There are a number of different ways to get to Kenya. Um, I had somebody last time who flew on miles and they needed to make four stops. And of course their luggage didn't make it, but Hey, they got the airfare for free. So it just depends on what your goals are and how it goes. I like it to be as simple and easy as possible. So we're going to fly down to Nairobi. 
We're going to arrive generally in the evening, 10 o'clock. If you don't arrive at that time, don't worry about it. We will arrange to have someone pick you up and get you to the hotel. Then the next morning, we get up and we will fly from Nairobi to the Maasai Mara National Park in Kenya. It's awesome. It's about a 45 minute flight. You know, I find a 45 minute flight is a little bit easier than a 10 hour drive on a bumpy road. So we fly and it's gonna be amazing once we get there. So the ultimate safari in Kenya is three Maasai Mara locations in luxury tented camps, three photographers per vehicle, small groups, photo focused. So we will have three vehicles with three photographers in each, and I will rotate between you to help you with your questions and answers and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be an amazing experience. And the ultimate photo safari is just that. We will be out in nature on safari, having an absolutely awesome time. And you won't believe what we'll get to see. Because gang, it's a tented safari, but it's not camping. So please put your fears of that aside. It is wonderful. It is luxurious. We will be in the Embu River camp, which is beautiful and fantastic on the river. So you can see the hippos. You can see the crocodiles. You'll see the elephants coming back and forth. It's amazing. We'll be at the Entim camp. And you can see these are tented camps, but it's not like any tent you've ever been, unless you've been to a tented camp in Africa before. It's luxurious, it's fun, it's exciting. You have a, a, a toilet and a shower in your bat in your room, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's just it's absolutely comfortable, fantastic, and amazing. And finally, natural habitat camp. All of these camps are centrally located in the Maasai Mara. We're using the tented camps because we want to be close to the animals so that we can be out easy to the animals and get the pictures that we want. If you want a little bit more traditional stay, then come tomorrow night when we talk about on the Kenya photo safari, when we stay in hard-sided lodges. So that'll be a little bit more a little bit more civilized, but this is 100%, 100% just right where you want to be. So we'll fly down to the Maasai Mara, and our camps, you can see, are located on the river. It's going to be an exciting experience because we are going for the migration. We are wanting to see the animals cross the Mara River, and we're going to be close enough. Our camps are all five or 10 minute drive from crossing points. We don't know where the animals are gonna cross. That depends on the animals. And sometimes they cross at many different places, but we will find those camps, those crossings, and we will find the animals. That's what the ultimate photo safari is about. So my job is to be there to be your tech assistant, your creative help, and help with the image reviews every evening. You know, we don't have formal slide presentations on the trip. The image reviews are very low key. We're sitting around the campfire or in the bar with our laptops, with a, with a cold adult beverage, sharing our pictures, discussing them, asking for help, all that kind of stuff. That's what it's all about, gang. So does anybody have any questions for me? So one of the reasons we've chosen Macon Safaris is they have these wonderful custom safari vehicles and amazing drivers. So I'll say one thing about Africa. The folks we go with on the Kenya Safari, the drivers are amazing. The, the Macon Safari drivers are absolutely fantastic. They are going to give you, they are going to get you there safely. They are gonna give you the history lesson. They know the behavior of the animals. They are all native Kenyans and they can tell you about what it's like to live in Kenya and what tribe they belong to and how many wives they have. And all that stuff is all available to talk about. And But we're going to be photographing from these awesome vehicles that have built-in beanbags. So you can sit in your seat and photograph right out the window from the low position. 
They'll have an open door so you can have an even lower position if you want. Or my favorite spot is to be up top so you can get a slightly elevated position. So it just depends on where the animal is and who the animal is as to where you be. And remember, there's going to be three of us in this vehicle designed for six. So there's plenty of room to move around. You're not going to have to fight with anybody for a spot to make a picture. Now, we can't all go to this position at once. We have to work that out, but that's an easy thing to do. Everyone goes down for five or 10 minutes and then we let, let the next person in. So that's how it works. So does anybody have any questions? Because the vehicles are comfortable, the ride is amazing. You can see that they have USB ports, pockets for your cameras, blankets to keep you warm, a place for your water bottle, all of those things. It's all been taken care of for you guys. It's all been well thought out. So, cause this is not our first rodeo here, gang. So what do you pack to come to Africa with us? Um, and, and in the materials I've, I'll send you on Wednesday is a video with what I pack to come to Africa, but it's, it's very simple. You need to be light and nimble. It needs to be a soft sided duffel bag about the size of a large gym bag in the 20 to 25 pound range with so you carry three sets of clothes, you wear one set of clothes with you, you bring a camp outfit. So for ladies, some of you, that's a sundress. For me, it's a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, a swimsuit, a light jacket, because it can be a little chilly in the morning. And you do need a raincoat because we'll have a couple of, a couple of mornings or a couple of afternoons of liquid sunshine and that doesn't stop us from photographing gang. We're still out photographing even in the drizzle. So you need to just be prepared for that. So this is what I look like on safari. So I've got my broad brimmed hat, long sleeve shirt, long pants, sturdy shoes. I've had even people come in shorts and flip flops. I don't recommend it, but this is what I look like on safari. And you don't need to go to ex officio and buy safari clothing, just a long sleeve shirt that's muted colors. So tans and greens and grays work best. You want to avoid dark blues and dark blacks because that attracts the flies. And you don't want to wear camo because the poachers and the army wears camo. So we want it, they want us to stay away from that. And of course, you don't want to wear bright pink or red or orange or yellow or something like that. Okay, any questions? So what about your camera gear? Did I hear a question there? So what about your camera gear? Well, you're gonna bring what you're gonna bring. Now, I own a camera store, and do I want all of you to buy a new camera or two and all your lenses? Yes, that's because I own a camera store. Does that mean you need to? No, you know, some people are gonna buy new gear for the trip. Some people are gonna bring what they got. And so this is my kit. This is the kit I've been bringing to Africa since I first started safaris in 2005. It's just changed. I mean, the bag is different because I have a new bag. I have different cameras and different lenses, but it's basically the same kit, just updated as time goes on. So for me, now two Nikon mirrorless cameras, the Z9, the Z7 II, 24 to 70, 70 to 200 lenses, 400 millimeter 2.8 lens, a 1.4 converter, and a 10 power pair of binoculars. That goes all in this Mindshift First Light bag. It weighs around 35 pounds, and that's my carry-on bag for on the airplane. I never check any of my camera gear. So why two cameras? So that I can always have two cameras ready. So the first camera, the Z9, will generally have the 400 lens on it for close-ups. And the second camera will have either the 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 lens on it to do a wider scene, whether it's a scenery with the animals in it. And you'll see some pictures when we get to the pictures of scenery with animals in the scene or a bigger group of animals like the mother and the baby rhino here with the 70 to 200, not with the 400. I don't just want one rhino. I want both of them. I want the whole herd of elephants. I want the whole pride of lions. So you take a bigger lens, 
I mean, a wider lens. So this is on our traditional vehicles, what it looks like. You can see the difference in what the making vehicles look like. They have the beanbag all the way along the top. You don't need to bring the beanbag. It's a really big advantage on that. Um, but it's always fun to just be out shooting. And you can see Cindy here has a 300 lens with a 1.4 converter on her Canon. And, and Jenny has a Nikon with a 28 to 300 style zoom lens on it. It just depends on what you're comfortable with. So on our Kenya Safari, the typical Safari day is what we do. We're not gonna be doing this on the ultimate Safari. On the ultimate Safari, we're gonna wake up, we're gonna have breakfast, we're gonna go find wildlife. We're going to make photos. We're going to track the animals, see what they're doing. We're going to make more pictures. We're going to rinse and repeat and do that throughout the day. Now, are we going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yes. Are we going to be close to restrooms? Yes. But the difference is, on the Ultimate Photo Safari, we're not going to break off the cheetahs because we have to get back for lunch. You know, lunch is at 12 o'clock. We're not going to come back for lunch if the cheetahs are doing something interesting. You know, we may go out with a sack breakfast and leave early so that we can be on location because we hear these lions are gonna hunt first thing in the morning. So we're gonna take a sack breakfast and a cup of coffee and a thermos and go because that's where the lions are. Or, 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 that's where we're gonna have the flexibility. Where we won't be that flexible and you really can't is we'll be back 6.30, have a chance to shower, change, relax, have a cocktail, have dinner, and then look at our pictures around the campfire. So that kind of has to happen every day. The rest of the schedule is 100% dependent on the animals. Now, if you feel tired one day and you don't wanna go out on safari, you wanna hang around the camp and lounge and do your thing, you are 100% welcome to do that. You know, if you're going to say, you know, they're coming back for lunch, I'll skip the morning and go out the afternoon, that's fine. Or you go out the morning and you say, I'm going to skip the afternoon, that's fine. That's that's 100% available. So please, 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 I want everyone to feel comfortable and relaxed and have fun with us while we're on safari. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Gee whiz, I must be explaining this perfectly because there are no questions. So, so Mark, quick, quick question for you. Yeah, it's it, Chuck. So for those of us with older prostates, there's there's the opportunity to stop and take care of that. Is that right? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. That, just, just want to make sure. <laughs> yep. No, no, you don't have. We're, we're not issuing corks and rubber bands, Chuck. Or diapers. Okay, that's good. No, right. no, no, no. Corks and rubber bands is the way it goes. Uh, Anybody else? Jean. Mark, this is Jean. Yeah, I was just curious. I don't own the kind of binoculars that you mentioned. And I have been on trips where sometimes they have some that you can borrow. Would the safari company be supplying anything like that? Or do we need to bring our own? You know, they always have a pair of binoculars in the Jeeps, Jean. But I find that they're pretty beat up. Because mm -hmm. they've been riding around in the Jeeps for five years. So you can pair buy a nice pair of Nikon binoculars for 140 bucks. I think that's a worthwhile investment for a trip like this. And that's the right um, magnitude. Oh yeah. Do you call yep, it? Yep, yep. I don't know how they the numbers. Yep. Are so that would be a 10 by 42 is what I. That's in what they have in the 130, 140 dollar price range. Yeah. Because you mentioned 10 by 30, but 10 by Yeah, I like the 10 by 30s because they're a little bit more compact and they fit better in my camera bag. But those are a little more expensive. Those are in the three to $600 price range. Okay, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Anybody else? All right, let's keep going. So why are we going in July or August? We're going in July and August because that's when the wildebeest and the zebras enter the Masai Mara 
on their year-long migration. You'll see coming from us shortly an announcement of our 2024, 2024 safari to Tanzania, where we're going in February, because that's when the wildebeest are at Lake Ndutu, and that's where we will be in February to see that. Here in July and August, we're seeing the animals here as they're crossing the Mara River, and that's amazing. And that's why we go. And that's why we go at this time, because if we're lucky, if the, the fates smile upon us, you will literally see thousands and thousands and thousands of wildebeest and zebras and all of the fun that goes along with that. And you will see in some places, zebras and wildebeest as far as the eye can see. And it's absolutely amazing. But the thing that always gets me is we'll be driving and we'll drive through 10 minutes of more wildebeest than you can count and then go over a little hill and there's nothing. There's not even one guy over there. They're just, it's the most crazy thing in the whole wide world. A friend of mine who's a biologist says it's called patchiness is the behavior that the animals all stick together in these mobs as they move around. And we'll get to see all that and we'll get to be part of it. And hopefully, we will see them crossing the Mara River because it is a spectacle. It is one of the loudest, most amazing things you will ever see. Um, and our camps, our three camps on the Ultimate Safari are all within very, very shoot spinning distance of a crossing site. So that's why we've chosen these camps so that we can get to the crossings easily if we see a crossing is coming if we know there's a crossing you know and the animals usually cross early in the morning and late in the afternoon so just as we're leaving in the morning or just as we're getting back in the afternoon then we'll be in position to capture it and that's the whole that's the whole purpose of this right and we're there going to see a lot of cool stuff so i want you to see this is evelyn on the right she's one of our regular safari people and Jane as well, and I hope you guys can hear this. Hold on. What did we just see, Gal? Yeah? The crossing. The great migration. Was it awesome? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And what happened, Evelyn? The wildebeest crossed <laughs> the river. That's what it's like. And what did you experience? Just... It was for dad's <laughs> So did you guys get to hear that? So Evelyn, you know, she may, she's still deciding whether she's going to join us on this safari. You know, she's 85 years old and 100 pounds dripping wet. She carries her Z9 with the 100 to 400 all around the world, making amazing wildlife pictures. So we're not gonna be satisfied on the ultimate safari with just a picture of a zebra. We're gonna explore the animals. We're gonna watch their behavior. We will see them doing what they do and capture it and try different things and experiment and have fun because it's all about being creative and getting a special photograph. We'll go for the leopards. When we hear there's a leopard, we'll go find the leopard and sit with the leopard and hopefully get an amazing picture. You never know because I tell people that safari is just like fishing. Sometimes you catch a lot of fish and sometimes you don't catch any fish at all. But we're going to be in a position where we'll get to see amazing things. We'll be out at the right time of the day, early in the morning, late in the afternoon, so we have the right light. We have the ability to capture the hyenas, the zebras, the baboons, doing what they do. And that's what the ultimate photo safari is about. 
We're going to be out photographing, having fun, exploring, seeing. <gasps> oh, I didn't even see. Look at the lions. So what are the lions going to do? Oh, my gosh. We see some activity. We're going to wait. Let's see what happens. Let's see how the lions behave. And then we'll be ready with our cameras to make the pictures, to tell the stories, to see the behaviors. That's what the ultimate safari is all about. Getting up close and making amazing photographs. Yeah. It's beautiful, it's powerful, it's stunning, it's exciting. It's what we're gonna be doing. And we'll see some crazy stuff, we always do. You, know, you never know what you're gonna see when you're on safari. But we're gonna be out together exploring in the Maasai Mara, one of my favorite places on the whole planet and seeing different things. People ask how close you get to the cheetahs. And hopefully we'll see the cheetahs hunting and we'll track the cheetahs as they stalk their prey, as they have success or failure. We'll be part of it. And that's what I want. I want the experience of being there with the animals, seeing mother with the cubs, and that story and how it unfolds and the power of the elephants. This is why I carry the wide angle lens because I wanted the elephants with the mountains in my picture. But I have the 400 so that I can capture the details, capture the intimate photos. I can catch the interaction of the elephants as they cross the road the elephants in the last rays of the sun as we're just headed into the barn at night. And you never know what we're going to see. So we had the opportunity this year of spending about two hours with this family of elephants, 20 some odd individuals, and they were going from their afternoon eating spot to their sleeping spot. And we just drove the car with them. And you know, we would sit, we would photograph, the elephants would pass us. We'd drive another five minutes ahead of them and wait and watch them come towards us and get amazing photos and have an amazing experience because you get to watch their behavior. You get to see what they do. And I don't know if you guys love elephants as much as I do. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. But I did mean to do this. Watch this, gang. Watch this. Look at the little guy. Right, He can't make it, so his brother has got to push him up with his trunk. She's looking at the one behind something. Yep. Come on, get up, get up. Come on, little guy. Come on. Oh, there he goes. Yes. But that's what we get to see. And that's oh. if you have the patience to sit with the animals, this is the experience we'll have. And that's what the ultimate photo, sorry, photo safari is about, is having this much time with the animals. So it's not just drive up, see the animals and move. It's drive up, spend the time, watch them. And with me and the drivers, we will move us into an amazing position to get the right picture. That's the whole point, gang, is to be in a position to get the right picture. And how cool is this, right? How cool is this to have this your experience with the elephants? Mm -hmm. And it just, it brings, it brings shivers to my spine right now watching this experience and these moments with the elephants that are right there, right where we'll be. And I, I just, 
I love it so much. I can't wait to share it all with you guys because this is what we're doing and this is how we're going to do it. And if you want this kind of an experience, the ultimate safari is the right one for you. Yes. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. And I can't wait to share our safari with you. So remember, gang, when you want to sign up tonight, you're going to call Maurice. He'll be up late. You can send him an email now. If you have questions about it, you want to make your deposit, you want to pay in full, that's all great. If you have questions about the photo equipment, the photo gear, what the photography is like, call me. Ultimate Photo Safari, July 19th to 29th. Gorilla Trek sold out. Kenya Photo Safari, we will have a similar presentation tomorrow night on the Kenya Safari, highlighting those lodges, that experience. Questions from anyone? So Terry wants to know, can we get out of the cars? Um, not while you're on safari, it is absolutely prohibitive. Um, there are places like, there are picnic areas, campgrounds, places like that where we can get out. Um, usually we'll stop there for lunch or to use the restroom or water or a snack or something like that. But you cannot walk in Kenya. Yes, we tip the drivers and we, you know, so you tip the hotel crew, you tip the drivers. That's all in the packet, Chuck. Um, so Terry asks, Z9, Z5, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, 100 to 400. You don't need the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 400. I would take the 24 to 70 and the 100 to 400 if that's what you've got. Um, you know, for me, I like the big 400 because I like the clarity on it. So that's that's my choice. Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, Mark, the uh, you had a shot in there of a hot air balloon. Mm -hmm. Do we get to uh, do hot air ballooning while we're over there? Not on this trip. We can do the hot air balloon on the... Kenya safari because that's where the balloons come from the balloons sometimes land where we're going to be on the ultimate safari but they don't take off from there okay but to do the balloon you have to give up a morning safari right so okay. I, I do Albuquerque I love hot air balloons so oh hot air balloon is fun isn't it Kim absolutely yeah. absolutely um so Bing no flash no flash at all you, you 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 and there's no real need to use flash um so chuck some of the lodges have big lights out by the river i have never been to these lodges i don't i don't um know but the other thing is there aren't any pictures of animals with big lights on these on these camps websites so I would assume they do not have big lights out on the river so we can do night photography. Anybody else? Questions? What What about I in your pictures, I didn't see very much dust. Is is that common over there or what? Yeah, so so everybody talks to me about having dust in Africa. I have been to Africa 16 times, never had a real problem with dust. Um, it can be dusty for stretches, but it's not like pervasive, you know, I don't have to wear a bandana across my mouth or any of that. No, no, I'm not afraid to change my camera lens. I don't change while we're driving, of course. I mean, but we're sitting, we're photographing. So it's, so this is a very calm and relaxed safari, if you would know what I mean, Chuck, I mean, Kim. Yep. We drive to the animals, we find the animals, they're doing what we do, and we park, and now we sit there and watch them, right? And it's very much like fishing, that there's a whole lot of watching and not a lot of action, and then something happens, and it's, oh my gosh, and in 10 minutes, 
you feel exhausted from a whole day's worth of activities, but it was 10 minutes worth of, you know what? So there's plenty of time to change lenses. And, and I assume that was your question, right? Yeah, that was my concern. Yep. 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 So the other question everyone asks about is bugs, right? So I, I'm going to, I always recommend that you bring insect repellent. I bring the insect repellent. I have put on insect repellent in 15 safaris to Africa, two nights. So 15 times, 150 nights in Africa, almost half a year in Africa. I have only put on insect repellent two nights. So what other questions? Uh, Mark, this is Jean. You, yeah. you showed pictures of like mammals. Do you stop and photograph like interesting, colorful birds? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are a lot of birds on there are a lot of birds in Africa. And it just depends on the where the water level is as to where the birds are. But when we see the birds, we'll certainly we'll certainly stop for the birds. So you have the colorful little birds like the lilac crested roller. Um, you saw a picture of um, of a saddlebill stork, we'll see the hornbills, we'll see all the vultures and buzzards and bustards, we'll see the eagles and the and stuff like that as well. And if there's opportunities, we're going to stop, Gene. You bet. Okay. And I'm sure you'll mention this tomorrow, but how many people do you take on the Kenya safari trip? 12 to 20 on Kenya safari. Okay. This that's one was eight. Four on in a four, that's four in a vehicle on that safari. Okay. So that's the big reason why there's a difference in price. So this is so the ultimate safari is eight photographers. I mean, eight people. The Kenya safari is 12 to 20 photographers, depending on how many people sign up. Mark, you had talked about in one of your videos about taking a small bag with you that you sort of put odds and ends in. Yes. So when you go in the vehicle in the morning, you're not taking your big camera bag into that. You're taking your camera, the lenses, and putting them in the pockets in the seats or whatever. Or no, how? no, my big camera bag comes with me, but I have a little, I have a little right. travel okay. backpack, so to speak. And if I need a jacket, it goes in there. My water bottle goes in there. If I want snacks, it goes in there. If I want sunscreen or my bandana, it goes in there. You Got know, it. some people will bring a jacket it goes in there so it's the camera bag and that chuck both okay okay good anybody else and and based on what you were saying mark we don't need any sort of a, a gimbal or anything like that not you really can't use it chuck okay so there there's no so I do use a panning plate with the 400 that I put on top of the bean bags. Most uh -huh. people don't. You just you know put the 400, the, the lens foot right on the bean bag. Um, but there's no room space need for a monopod, a tripod, a gimbal, any of that kind of stuff. Great. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions? What about your filter kit? Don't even bring it. Okay. You don't have time. You know, and so, so every now and then I miss a polarizing filter. Every now and then I miss a, a neutral density filter. But the amount of time it takes to change that stuff and keep it clean is not worth it to me. Right. So I, when you're, you know, like when the sun is setting, you don't have a lot of time. It goes, and that's the one thing I can't understand. I mean, I do understand it's geography, right? On the equator, the sun rises and sets so fast. Oh my gosh. It's like you can, you can physically see the sun dropping down and rising up. It almost looks like a time-lapse movie. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Tim. No. Well, I just thought your your light came on, so I, so I was wondering. All right, guys, if nobody else has any questions, I will 
Let's see who is the first one. I'm sure some of the people who are already logged off are already calling Maurice now. So please give Maurice a call to get your spot locked in. Um, you certainly want to get one of those cancellation spots. And if you don't, you want to get one of the spots before this trip sold out. So, um, and then we will have another Zoom meeting again with the group closer to the trip. You know, probably two, one about 60 days out and one about 30 days out. You know, the 60 day out to help you with your packing and all that kind of stuff. And the 30 days out to help you with your photo tips and things like that. Um, you can all check out. I have, I will send to you on Wednesday, my videos on packing your camera bag, capping, packing your suitcase. You'll have all that. Plus the three recordings for the Gorilla, the Ultimate, and the Kenya Safari. Uh, I know I'll see some of you tomorrow night. I hope we'll see all of you in Kenya when we have an amazing experience photographing the animals. All right, I'm gonna give a five, four, three. Come on, last question, anybody? The two. USB ports are for charging your batteries, Mark, I assume? I don't trust them in the car. Okay. I charge my batteries at night. I would charge my phone in the car. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I carry too many batteries. I just, so Chuck, I don't want to screw up. I, I you know, I, I want everything I can count on. So I have enough batteries to get me through. Yeah. And I know you've got a big battery to charge those batteries off of as well. So good, good, okay. good, good. Yep. All okay. right. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. Everybody enjoy your evening. I will see some of you tomorrow. I can't wait to hear from Maurice tomorrow. How many of you called tonight? This is gonna be awesome. I can't wait to go on safari with you. Thanks everyone. Good night, we'll see you soon. Bye. Good night.